horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of seven states. The stories of his courage and daring were told around a thousand campfires. Indian and white men alike turned to him when they needed help, for his reputation for fairness was known to everyone. It was he, more than any other man, who finally brought law and order to the new territory. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young, from out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Outlaws are near Cedarville. We've got to hurry. I'll Silver! Away! Our story begins one evening in the cafe at Cedarville. Three men are standing at the bar. Newt Birch, the sheriff, Duff Seeley, the local harness maker, and Bill Meadows, a horse dealer. Meadows says, Sheriff, I don't hold with the way you got it figured out at all. Lige says he'd swear there was just two fellas run off that second bunch of horses, and Folk Peters don't stir a step. Listen, he's got his whole gang on. I don't know, Bill. We trailed him as far as Antelope Pass, didn't we? And ain't that folks old stamping grounds? That don't prove nothing. Eh, it's too doggone bad old Lige couldn't get to town sooner to let us know the last time. If we could have started after him just 15 minutes sooner, we'd have likely caught him. Once near the pass, there's a couple of hundred canyons for them to hide in. That's the wildest country there is. It ain't no wilder than I'm feeling right now. Hey, Sheriff. Yeah, Duff? Is there anybody you suspicion for this? If there was, I wouldn't mention it till I got some proof. Why, you got ideas? Well, I don't know that it amounts to anything, but you can take it for what it's worth. Yakima was in my shop day before yesterday. He bought himself one of the best saddles I had. Bought it with cash. Be careful, Duff. Yakima's sitting right over there. He might hear you. Oh, what of it? Look here, Sheriff. Yakima is just an engine. He and little wolf hat partner of his don't do nothing but raise a little grub on the place of theirs. To sell to the folks in town. Now, where would they get enough cash from that to be able to throw it away on fancy saddles? Can't jail a fella for spending money. You can if that same was stole. Sheriff, I wonder if Duff ain't on the right track. We got Lige's word for it, that there was two fellas herding them horses. What's to prevent them fellas being Yakima and his sidekick? Yakima! Hey there. Oh. Step over here a second, Redskin. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Buy fresh grub from Yakima? Nope. But I wouldn't mind knowing how much cash you and Little Wolf's been making out of that garden of yours. Make plenty cash. Yakima buy saddle. Buy good saddle. Pay cash. That plenty good, huh? Maybe just a mite too good, Injun. Saddles come high, Yakima. 
You sure you got all the cash for that saddle just from the grub you've been selling? Me save cash long time now. Me want saddle long time. Now me got. Sheriff, I reckon the Redskin could stand more questioning. Your story don't sound straight to me. What matter? You think me not tell truth? You just bet we don't, Injun. Hold on, hold on, Dub. He might be telling the truth. I savvy Redskins enough to know how they are once they get the notion in their head they gotta have something. <laughs> I reckon like one old fella that near starved himself to death just to buy his squaw a mirror like white folks use. Nah, I don't mean that this hey, Injun. Huh? Oh, it's you, Buck. Thought I told you to tend shop while I was gone. Mr. Greggy stopped in to, to find out how much some work you wanted done had cost him. Well, what you want done? I, I took the shortcut around back to get here sooner. What's that got to do Please, with... Please, Mr. Seeley, just wait a second. Sheriff, I seen something when I came here that I think you ought to know. Yeah? What's that, Buck? Well, don't let the Redskin get me, will you? Oh, well, what do you he, mean by... He's got a horse tethered around the side of the cafe where it's dark. I know it's your chemist because the saddle Mr. Seeley just sold him is on it. And that saddle is on one of the horses that was stole from Mr. Meadows. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. not tell truth. Yakima, leave horse in front. Don't let him get me, Sheriff. Careful, Redskin. Me not hurt him. We're going to find out about this. You sure it was Yakima sadly seen on that horse, Buck? I ought to know it, Sheriff. I helped Mr. Seeley make it. Maybe you made a mistake in the horse. No, sir. Mr. Meadows, it was that big black horse with the white blaze on his head that you let me ride a couple of times before it was stole. I'd know that horse anywhere. And by thunder, so would I. It's around to the side of the cafe, you say? Uh huh. He likely left it there, hoping nobody would see it. Come on, Redskin. Me not steal horse. We'll blame soon. Find out. Lead the way, Buck. I can take you right to it. I guess this proves I had the right one, Sheriff. Maybe so, Dub. Me leave horse right there. Huh? It's gone. Don't try to pretend, Injun. Your chemo not thief. Your chemo not steal. Redskin. Gonna look mighty bad for you if Buck didn't make no mistake. But me hey, not. Hey, hurry. It sounds like there's somebody around there. What the? Come on, Hey, it's the masked man. And he's taking the engine's horse with him. Pull up or we'll fire. Oh, Traveling too fast to hit. Blast it. There goes the evidence. I seen the saddle, though. It was the one I sold to the engine, all right. Yeah. And that was one of the horses that was stolen from me. Yakima, you're going to jail. We'll get my deputies and tell them we're taking after that masked fella. Hurry it up so we can get started before the trail gets cold. Buck, come here. Where do you think you're going? I was just going back to the shop, Mr. Seely. Look here. How'd that masked fella know that horse was there? Did you get careless? Uh, gosh, I don't know how he found out. Honest, I don't. I done just like you told me. I, I was sure nobody seen me. Uh, you spoiled everything. The sheriff jailed the engine, but he won't be able to keep him in jail unless he's got evidence. But, but even if he does let Yakim out again, he'll figure him and Little Wolf as the horse thieves just the same, won't he? Maybe. But it ain't to be depended on. Who was around when you took the Indian's horse from in front of the cafe? Well, nobody, Mr. Seeley. I made sure of that. And what'd you do after you took the Indian's well, horse? Well, I, I hid it away in that place, you said. Then I changed the saddle under the stolen horse and, and brought it around to the side of the cafe the way you told me. Why, why gosh, it just don't seem possible anybody could have seen me do it. And right after that, I came inside the cafe... Now, can I get back to the shop, Mr. Seeley? No. But I've got to... I got more work for you. Yeah? yeah? You're riding to Antelope Pass. You're collecting the $500 Poke owes me for the first bunch of horses we stole for him. And tell him that that masked man is around these parts. Well, please, Mr. Seeley, I... I don't want to get mixed up anymore in this horse stealing. Ain't I done enough already? Oh, are please, you? Please, please, I don't want You'd to... You'd like to report me to law, wouldn't you? No. No, I wouldn't tell a thing, Mr. Seeley. Honest, I wouldn't. Just don't make me steal... Give me your hand. Huh? I said, give me your hand. Yeah. <laughs> My arm, you're twisting it. Don't. Don't. I'm sorry for what I said. Let me go. <laughs> Changed your tune, didn't you? That hurt, Mr. Seeley. <laughs> and the next time will hurt worse. Now, are you going to do like I say, or ain't you? I... I'll ride to post camp, Mr. Seeley. Afraid of the crooked harness maker's threat, spurred his horse on through the night until he had reached the camp of Polk and his gang. There he delivered Duff's message. He did not know, however, that in spite of the precautions he had taken, the masked man and Tonto had trailed him from town. They had reined in their horses less than a mile from Polk's camp and. 
We can't get closer to the camp, Tonto. Poker's guards posted more than half a mile down the trail. Him play safe. Yes, and he's making it difficult for us. We've got to prove that he and Duff Seely are working together. I believe I can get Duff to visit Poke's camp. Then all the sheriff will have to do would be to see them together. Not right. In this case, however, that won't work. By the time the sheriff got near the camp, the guards would have given the alarm and Duff would have made his escape. And what we do? We'll wait here until the boy returns. He should be long soon. Uh. And Tonto, as long as we can't take the law to the outlaws, we'll have to do something else. What's that? Make the outlaws go to the law. You got a plan? I have. Wait. Maybe that boy now. It probably is. We'll see when he's clear of the mouth of that canyon. You stop him? I said we'd have to make the outlaws go to the law. I know a way to do that. First, we'll have to capture the boy, however. Uh -huh. There he is. How far from here are the nearest guards, Tonto? Them not here. Then come on. Come on, Silver Scout. Rain up, Buck. Stop your horse. Get up. Get along that horse. Me? Rope him. Hey, watch out. You'll drag me off the horse. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, Scout. Let me go. What are you... Hey, it's the masked man I've seen in town. You're right. And the engine. Are you a friend of Yakima's? Look, I didn't want to see him jail. What? What's that money pouch you have there? I... Well, it ain't... I'll take it. You hold up, man. We're not. You're going to tell us where you got this cash, however, and what it's no. for. No. Wait, listen. There's no hurry. You're going to camp with us. You can tell us then. Please, mister. I, I got to get back to town. Dismount. I... But... I said dismount. <clears throat> All right, stranger. Take him on, Scout, with you, Tonto, but keep the rope on him. Ah. Uh, now you get in saddle. <laughs> When morning arrived and Buck Davis had not returned, Duff Seely began to worry. At first, he suspected that Buck might have run away, taking the cash with him. But when the boy's horse returned riderless to the home corrals, his suspicions took a different turn. However, before acting upon them, he decided to turn even this misfortune to his own advantage. He persuaded the sheriff to ride with him toward Little Wolf's cabin, about a mile from town. I tell you, Sheriff, it's as plain as day. Just as soon as Little Wolf found out his part was thrown in jail and found out it was because of Buck, he decided to get even. It's likely. Here we are. Oh, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Redskin's home, all right. There's his horse. Must be inside. Come on. I'll soon get to the bottom of this. Open up there. Open this here door before I bust it open. What matter? Why are you coming? Redskin, you're going to talk and talk fast. What have you done with Buck Davis? Where have you got him hid? Or have you killed him already? What you talk about? Don't give us that. Talk or it'll be the worst for you, little wolf. Me not see Buck. Me not got him hid. Why are you blasted sneaking Redskin? I ought a gun with you. Buck was just the same as a son to me. I'm going to get him back safe and sound, or you wish you never was born. Now will you talk? Why you think me take Buck? Because we just the same as caught your partner red-handed with one of the stolen horses last night. Because we happen to know there was two fellas that run the horses off. Which makes it look mighty bad for you. And because it was Buck that got the goods on Yakima. And now he's gone. Yakima not steal horse. Me not steal horse either. You get wrong fellow. Well, Sheriff, what are you going to do with a polecat? If he won't talk, there's just one thing to do. Uh -huh. Put him in jail alongside his partner until he does. All right, Redskin, you're coming with me. Oh, no. no. You not take Little Wolf. You not Martin. You make bad mistake. Little Wolf not savvy where Buck is. Me not take him. Maybe you'll change that story after you've had a spell in jail to think it over. Now get on your horse. Uh, come on, Duff. I won't be going back into town with you, Sheriff. I reckon you can handle the engine alone, can't you? And a dozen more like him. But where are you going? To start hunting for Buck. How do we know how soon the engine will tell where he is? Maybe Buck's someplace right now where he ain't got food or water. Or a chance to get free. Yeah, but wait till I send a posse to help you. Nope, I'm starting right now. Sheriff, that boy meant more to me than I can tell you. And I just gotta be looking for him. Uh -huh. I reckon I savvy. I'll see you later, Sheriff. Get up. Get up there. All right, Skin. We're heading for the jailhouse. Come on. Get up. Get along, boy. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. In spite of Duff's statement, he did not believe the boy, Buck Davis, had been made a prisoner by Little Wolf. When Duff left the sheriff, he drove his horse toward Antelope Pass, where he made his way through a maze of canyons. After being hailed by Polk Sentinels, he was permitted to enter the outlaw's camp. Oh, 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 oh. Duff, what in places are you doing here? I reckon you can guess. You got a line on more horses? I'm looking for Buck. Huh? And you're the fellow can tell me where he is. Where he is? Didn't he get home last night? He started out soon enough. He didn't get home. But I thought Much that... Much more, I got a good notion why he didn't. Did you give him the cash you're on me? Sure I did. Say, you mean you figure he run off with it? Well, I'll be... He didn't run nowhere. Then what are you His talking... His horse showed up to home this morning by itself. Oak, you wouldn't buy any a chance of figured you'd keep that cash for yourself, would you? Now, look here. You wouldn't have drilled the kid so as I'd think he stole my cash, would you? Why, you blame fool... If I'd done that, why would I let his horse get away? Maybe you couldn't help yourself. Maybe it broke loose before you could stop it. You're a blasted idiot. Oh, I am, am I? Of course you are. There's a dozen things could have happened to the kid without my having anything to do with him. Maybe one of his stirrup straps busted and he took a tumble. His stirrup straps was all right. Well, his horse could have thrown him, couldn't it? Or maybe that mask fellow he said was around here might have done something with him. How could he? The sheriff sent his deputies to chase him. He had enough to do to look out for himself without trailing after Buck. Ah... It's the same mass fellow you suspicion it is. That horse of his would get clear of them deputies in no time. Maybe. And besides, you know I wouldn't try to do you out anything you got coming. I don't know anything of the kind. Hoke, I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw a heifer. That's kind of reckless talk, ain't it? What if it is? Maybe you're forgetting you're alone in my camp. If I was you, I'd talk kind of soft and easy-like. Uh, well, well, maybe the kid did take a tumble. Or maybe the mask hombre did have something to do with his disappearance. Yeah. But recollect this. If I find out one of them things ain't so, if I find out you done this trick to me, I'll get square with you if it's the last thing I do. You're welcome to try it. And here's another thing to remember. I still figure I got 500 coming from you. You gonna pay up or ain't you? The place is with you. I paid the kid. If you didn't get the cash after that, it's just your hard luck. Well, I'm heading back for town. But don't you forget what I just said. It ain't likely. And you're getting no more horses from me till you pay up. Get it back. Get along now. When Duff Seeley left Polk's camp to return to town... He did not know that two men, one masked, were watching him from a place of concealment beyond the last sentinel stationed by the outlaws. There he comes, Tonto. Ah, and him look plenty mad. Crooks never trust each other, Kimosabe. Perhaps Duff and Polk didn't quarrel, but I'll wager enough was said to make our plan successful. Get up there! 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 Him ride heap fast. Probably hoping you'll find Buck somewhere on the trail. You've learned where the horses are hidden? Ah. Them not near camp. Them in canyon over that way. Me take you there, all right. Pokes clever. The law should somehow be able to surprise him. He could claim he knew nothing about the horses. This time, however, his cleverness is going to trap him. Uh, we'll wait till dark, Tato, and then we'll act. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Only one of Polk's men was needed to guard the stolen horses in the narrow mouth canyon. It was some distance from the camp, and the law could never have proven that Polk knew of their existence. But that night, the outlaw on guard was aroused by a low call. No. She jumped to attention with a startled cry. Hi. Saw two figures loom up in the darkness, and then... Oh. oh. You got him, Tonto? Uh, him not come to for maybe two hours now. Good. Come. The masked man and the faithful Indian mounted their great horses and raced toward the animals grouped within the canyon. They circled behind, uttered sharp commands, and suddenly the herd swung about with a great pattering of hoofs and sped toward the canyon's mouth. Come on! Hit the An hour, two hours went by. Then slowly the outlaw, left behind, stirred, groaned, rose unsteadily to his feet. Well... Gone. 
The horse is gone. Will I tell the boss about this? In their camp, the outlaws were still grouped around the dying embers of their fires. But as the sound of running footsteps reached them, they looked toward their leader in alarm. Hey! Somebody's running this way. Quiet! Who's there? Oh, oh, the horse. It's Shorty. What's the matter? The horse is a stole, boss. Stole? Every last one of them. Gone. Clean gone. You fool. Boss, I couldn't help it. Honest, I couldn't. A thousand dollars worth of horse flesh took right from mother, you know. But I never even seen him till it was on me. What's it? You seen him? Well, not to know again. But I can tell you one of them skunks. Who? Duff Seely. Why, then? How do you know it was him if you couldn't make him out? I heard one of them call out his name just before I was hit. I was knocked cold. Boss, that fits in all right. Yeah. You know what Duff said. He told you he figured you did something to the kid. I'll bet my saddle this is that pole cat's way of getting even. And who else would know where the horses was kept? The double-crossing sidewinder. Get your horses. Are we riding? Where are we going, boss? To have a talk with Duff. But if we show ourselves... He don't live in town. He's got that place beyond where the engines live. And I don't care if he was in town. I'd get him anyhow. Now, hit leather, fellas. We're traveling. All right, all right. Duff Seeley retired that night with nothing on his mind but the disappearance of Buck and the $500. In the morning, he rose, dressed, and started to prepare his breakfast. When I glanced through the window toward the corral, made him drop the pan he was holding. By heavens, where'd they come from? Back, Duff. Keep your hand from that holster. The masked man! Right. Let me out. Them horses in the corral. Uh, stolen horses. The horses you stole and delivered to Poke. I gotta get rid of them. Hide them if they're sheep. You're staying inside. But I... That door over there. Where does it lead to? That, that's my bedroom. But look, stranger, Keep I... Keep still. I'll do the talking. You... You're going to have some visitors. Visitors? Pope Peters and his gang. No. No, they'll think I took them horses. They'll drill me. Stranger, wait, listen. Don't make me stay here. I know a lot about you, Duff. I know that when Pope decided to come back to this part of the country... It was because you had written to him, suggesting a way the two of you could work together. That ain't so. You I... stole the horses and delivered them to him to sell. Once more, you made Buck help you against his will. You had him so terrified that he had to become a crook. Please, Now wait. you're going to pay for what you've done. I tell you, there ain't a word of truth in what you said. It was them engines that stole the horses. Ask the sheriff. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. They'll show you why it was wrong. Pook and his men. Oh, they'll kill me. I'm going in that bedroom, but I'll have a gun on you every second, Duff. I leave the door open an inch. If you say a word about my being here, you'll taste lead. Don't make any mistake, Duff. They'll shoot me. They won't let me explain. I... Duff, we know you're in there. Come in. You rotten double-crosser. Oh, well, what's the matter? I knew it was you took them horses from the canyon, Duff. But I never figured you was fool enough to bring them right here to your own corral. It was lucky I found out what a loco widget you are before you got us all in trouble. Uh, I can't explain now, Pope. But you got ah, Don't let him try to talk his way out of this, boss. Give the polecat what he's got coming to him. He'll get it. Duff, you was at my camp last night. You said I kept the cash that was coming to you and that you aimed to get square for it. Pope, don't talk. Keep still. We'll, we'll talk this out later. But later right now... nothing. I've caught you dead to rights. Wait. And I've got things figured out. Buck never did disappear at all. You just want to bluff on me, thinking maybe I'd give you more cash. That ain't it, Pook. For all I know, maybe you was deciding to leave town. Maybe you had a buyer for them horses outside and wanted them back so you could make the sale yourself and keep all the cash. You're wrong, Pook. And all that talk about the mask fella being back. That was just to keep me from suspicion in you. The same way you put the blame on them engines living down the road to keep the sheriff off your trail. I wish I could talk to you the way I want to, Pook. But I can't now. Why not? Well, I... If you've got any explanation to make, now's the time to make it. Because in another minute, it'll be too late. I can't say anything now. Honest, I can't. But later... No, there won't be any later. You're all through, Duff. Let's drill a double-crosser and get the horses back and light out. Ain't safe staying here so close to town. Right. No, don't shoot. You're getting drilled. And you ain't getting nothing you ain't deserving. No, put that gun down. I... Take it like a man. You... Ah, my Where did that shot come from? Look, it's a mess, fellow. My hand's broke. Up with your hands, all of you. Poke, that's why I couldn't talk. He was behind that door all the time. But I couldn't warn you, or he'd have drilled me. And the masked fellow was back in this part of the country. Well, it don't make no difference if he did hear what we said. He can't prove nothing against us. Nobody's going to take a masked fellow's word for nothing. No one will have to. But... Have you heard enough, Sheriff? You Sheriff. better have, stranger. Come on, Tonto, you too, Buck. Hey, what is it's it's Buck. 
And that engine don't always travel through the mast, fella. Yeah. You was pretty slick, but the mast man was slicker yet. Sure, if I ain't done nothing. No? All you done was steal horses, deliver them to poke here, and then put the blame on a couple of redskins that never done no harm to you. It wasn't me that blamed the engine, Sheriff. It was Buck there. Because you made him do it. How'd you fellas get in that there room? <laughs> we was there before you got here. The masked man kept Duff busy talking while we was climbing in the window. Frick. But how did you know we'd be here, Sheriff? You didn't see us riding here. I'd have told the Sheriff what to expect. We took your horses, folk, and told the sheriff when it was done. And I don't mind admitting that when the engine first talked to me, I didn't believe him neither. He made me come along. And now I'm blame glad I did. Blast you, shorty. You was the one said you heard Duff's name mentioned when the horses was took from the canyon. But I did, uh, boss. Uh, uh, uh. Me call mask friend Duff. What? Shorty, him believe what him hear. <laughs> come here, Buck. Yes, sir. You think you can handle a shooting iron well enough to help me get these skunks back to town and stowed in jail? Sure I can, Sheriff. And here's Polk's gun. They try to make a break for it, let him have it. Sheriff, Buck's just as guilty as the rest of us. You can't jail us less than you jail him, too. Yeah? Well, I've heard the whole story. I know how you scared the living daylights out of the kid, Duff, to make him do like you said. So I'm giving him another chance to go straight. I mean, fair. Maybe not. But the masked fella asked me to. And after what he's done... That fella can't ask nothing that wouldn't be agreeable to me. Come on, Silver Old Fellow! Someone's waiting for us near Plainfield! We've got to hurry! Hurry, old Silver! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>